Now so far we've been looking at drawing techniques which represent objects in three dimensions, trying to make them look realistic, so our perspective views uh, that we've done in previous exercises. For accuracy and uh, to make it easy for people that are making the parts that we want, it's a good idea to draw in two dimensions. So we're going to start looking at two-dimensional drawing today. And we're going to think about how, how it's best to represent objects in two dimensions, what's the best way to lay out the drawings, uh, and, and so on. I'm going to start by thinking about um, splitting a, a, an object up into two-dimensional views. So something like this cylinder, for instance. Okay, we could draw that as a three-dimensional cylinder, but if we were going to have that made, we would want to draw that in two dimensions. So we draw one view looking straight at it from the side, and perhaps a view from the top or, or whatever. Um, now there's a bit of an issue with a shape like this, because if we draw just looking straight at it from the side, like this, then the view we get would be something like this. And from that one view, we can't tell whether that's a cylinder, whether it's a box, whether it's a Toblerone shape, or, or what is it? We don't know. So we need other views to do that, to help us understand the shape. Uh, in this case, we would draw the top view to show uh, what the object looks like from the top. Now those two views together define that cylinder quite nicely. And we could put sizes on and so on. So it's important to split the object up into more than one view. And it's also important how we lay the views out on the paper. Um, we need to know that someone reading this drawing will know that that's the top and that's the side. Uh, and so on. Now this is a fairly simple shape, but for more complicated objects that becomes really important. We, we need to know that we've got a side view here, a top view here, uh, an end view, a right hand view there, and so on. The way we set these out on the paper is called the projection. And we're going to look today at a particular projection which is called third angle orthographic projection. Now orthographic just means looking straight at it in 2D, just like we've done here with the cylinder. Now the object we're going to draw is going to be this wooden block. It's a slightly interesting shape so that it's worth representing with several views. If it was just a box then it would be a bit boring. Um, and we're going to draw it at full size on a piece of A4 paper. Now if we were in school we would probably use uh, extra equipment like drawing boards and parallel motions and set squares and so on. But of course you don't have that at home. So I'm going to show you how to construct a third angle orthographic projection of this object just using a ruler and a pencil. So I'll start by getting my piece of paper. This is A4 paper. You should have that, I would have thought. And we can see that this will fit on the paper in our different views. And we're going to set it out in this particular style or system called third angle projection. Now in third angle projection, we've got a side view or an elevation view down here, say. It can be somewhere else, but we're going to start with it down here. And then we're going to do the top view at the top, looking straight down at it. And we're going to do, going from this view again, the right hand end at the right hand side. So something like that. Um, there are other systems, but we're going to do this one called third angle projection. Now third angle just means that the top view is at the top, the right hand side at the right hand side of the paper. Those three views will be enough to define the object that we're drawing. It will end up looking something like this. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to construct this. And you'll see we've got the side view, or the elevation as we call it. We've got the top view, or the plan. And we've got the, the right-hand end view, or the end elevation, over here at the right-hand side. So taking our sheet of paper then, I'm going to start by putting in a sort of floor line, a line which the object can rest on. Now I've got my object in front of me so I can measure it. We're going to draw it full scale so that it's one scale one to one, it's full size, we can just measure straight from the object. But I'm going to just put a line 
quite lightly. This is a construction line to represent the floor, the, the base level of the object. You can measure up from the bottom like I've done before, or you can just, if your ruler's wide enough, you can just rest the ruler along the bottom of the paper to do that. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to decide where my object's going to sit left to right. And I think round about there would be fine. So I'm going to put a little tick on there. Let's measure that. 38. So if I had a set square, of course, I could just put my set square on and it would give me a right angle. But I don't have a set square, so I'm going to use my two-point measuring trick and I'm going to do a construction line there. That's the bottom corner of my drawing, bottom left corner. Uh, I now need to start measuring the object. So if I measure the length of my block, it's 100 millimetres. So I'm going to measure along 100 from the line that I've drawn. And I'm going to measure again up here 100. And I'm going to draw my construction line top to bottom. Nice long construction line, because I'm going to use that to create my plan view as well. Okay. I'm doing these quite heavy, you can do them a bit lighter. And I need to look at the height of my object, and if I measure that it's 45 millimetres. So I'm going to measure 45 twice, once there, and once about there. And I'm going to draw my construction line right across the page again, because I can use that to construct my end elevation. So you can see we've got a box now that that object fits into quite nicely. Uh, that's the beginnings of our uh, elevation view, our side view. So let's finish that side view off. Um, we've got a couple of things to put in. We've got uh, a little step at the back here. So if I measure that, so it's 20 tall, it's 15 wide. These are all millimetres, of course. So I'm going to create a line 20 millimetres up. And 15 millimetres wide, so I'm going to measure from the vertical, 15 millimetres in. And again up here, because I will need it up here, you'll see why. So you can see I've got my outline starting to take shape. I just need to take this slope piece off here, and I'm going to do that by measuring the front edge, which is again 20 millimetres, and I'm going to measure the distance along the top from that step. So that's about 40 millimetres. So let's put a little tick there, and then we just simply join those two up. There's no point in measuring the actual slope. There we go. So you can see we've got our shape appearing there. Now I would normally do all my views and then go over them, but I'm going to go over this one now just so that you can see how see clearly what it looks like. Okay, so you can see we've now got that side view drawn fairly accurately, scale one to one. Um, I want to draw my plan view up here, so I'm going to start by doing a horizontal line to represent this side, then I can put another one to represent that side, and my plan's pretty much done then. So it wants to be about, about there. It's 55, same again. them up and then the width of that I think is also 45 yet so you can see that 45 millimeters so I'm going to put that in two ticks again this makes sure that the lines are parallel to each other if you don't do that it's going to end up looking a bit wonky okay so we've pretty much got the top view the only thing we haven't got is this line across where the 
the uh, top changes direction. We need that line to be there. So we're going to take that from this, and that was 40 millimeters, wasn't it? So I put a little tick there at 40, and I can join that up to it. There we go. Okay, so that's our plan view or our top view. Um, I'm going to leave that fairly light for now. I hope you can see it there. I'm now going to draw in the right hand end elevation. Very similar technique. Decide where I want to put it. Probably about here. So I know that I can draw a line parallel to the edge of the paper. Just move my paper around a bit just to make it easier for me to draw. But that's that's one side of it there. I know it's 45 millimeters wide because I've already measured it. So I'm going to measure 45 there and 45 there. These lines are all really light so they won't be too obvious when we've finished. And that is pretty much what you'd see looking that way at this block. I'm just going to go over them now and uh, neaten them up and make them a bit heavier. go we have got a elevation view I tend to make that the most interesting view of the three if I can so I'll start with the most interesting view and then the other views can be taken from that so we've got the top view at the top that's looking down on the object and we've got the right hand end at the right hand side it's looking straight at this side of the object it's important to draw them very neatly to make sure the line quality is consistent and it's also important to put a border around the page so that if you receive a print of a drawing, if you are going to make hundreds of these, you know you've got the whole drawing. So uh, people that are doing these engineering drawings will put a border around their page um, just so that when it's printed we know we've got the whole drawing. So I'll just do that and then the drawing will be finished. a third angle projection of this block done at scale one to one. Um, what we'll do next time is we'll put some labels on this drawing, we'll put some information about when it was drawn and so on, the scale, and we'll also put some dimensions or measurements on. But if you can get to that stage this week, you'll be ready to do all that next time. Mm -hmm.